Hey guys, uh, here is just a quick little recap of what we did at the end of class today about doing the inverse trig ratios. Uh, essentially just a fancy way of being able to go backwards. So let's start out doing something we already know how to do. Let's build up our confidence here. Uh, let's say this is, I don't know, 39 degrees and here's an unknown piece and they give us the hypotenuse is say uh, 14, whatever. Okay. So you would look at this, and if you studied for today's quiz, you'd be like, oh yeah, of course, I'm going to use sine for that, right? Because you know, uh, you, you know you're looking for the opposite, and you know the hypotenuse. Opposite, hypotenuse, sine. So here we go. This is what you would have done. Sine 39 degrees equals x over 14. And you figure out either on the computer, you know, go to Google, type it in. Uh, on your calculator, uh, even on your phone, you could do this. Of course, so sine of 39 is whatever. 0.6293 and you would solve it the way we've been doing it no big deal uh, 14 times 0.6293 and you get around 8.8 .8 and you feel pretty good um, but here's the little twist I'm gonna take this exact same scenario right I'm gonna take this exact same scenario and switch it up a little bit okay so this was 14 right here's our right angle but instead of giving you the 39 degrees, I'm going to give you the 8.8 .8 for this side. 8.8. .8. And obviously these can be anything. I'm just doing the same numbers so that you kind of can see where it's going. And the unknown is actually here. Okay, so it's the same pieces. Angle, opposite, hypotenuse. Angle, opposite, hypotenuse. It just is different what we know and what we need. We need the angle. We know the side. Here we had the angle and we needed the side. Okay, good news, it's still sine. It's still the sine of the angle equals opposite over hypotenuse. The sine of the angle equals opposite over hypotenuse. So that's, that's a beautiful thing. If you understood this, you really do understand this. It's just a matter of being able to get x by itself because right now it's kind of sort of inside here. Okay, it's kind of stuck inside the sine. Well, this part we can do. That's just a, you know, just division. Let's at least get that part out of the way. 8.8 .8 divided by 14 is 0 0.62, 8, I don't know, maybe 6 if you want to round it a little bit. That's sine of x. We usually don't put the degrees, but I, I kind of put it there so you remember that it's an angle. doesn't really matter. Um, let's see. So sine of x equals 0.6286, and I want to solve for x. Well, <laughs> it's not like basic algebra where you can just divide by you know the thing in front. I can't just divide by sine. Right? It doesn't really make any sense. So we have this trick called the inverse sign. And what the inverse allows us to do is essentially switch places here. We can take our ratio and our angle and switch places if we use the inverse sign. And by the way, this will work for cosine or tangent. It's the same idea. It's just, you know, you got to set it up with whatever pieces you've got. So this is what it looks like. Sine, and then they write it to the negative one power. It, or that's what it looks like. It, we don't really say it that way. We just call it inverse. So this is inverse trig ratios. So there's there's inverse sine, there's inverse cosine, there's inverse tangent. And they all look like this. So the inverse sine of our ratio, 0.6286, must equal the angle. Okay, that's a two. So I'll read it again. If the sine of the angle equals this ratio, right? Remember this was a ratio. So the sine of the angle equals the ratio, then the inverse sine of the ratio equals the angle. Okay? Sine of the angle equals the ratio, inverse sine of the ratio equals the angle. And now this is pure calculator. Okay? So either you have to use one of these or a scientific calculator, but what you'll need to notice is if you look on your calculator, if you look closely at sine, cosine, or tangent, if you look right above, you see how it has the, it looks like it's to the negative one, right? Sine to the negative one, cosine negative one, tan negative one. So to get there, uh, to get there, we just need to do second sine, and then you can see it. You can actually see it on the screen. It'll put a little negative one up there, okay? So inverse sine of 0.6286 is approximately... 38.95 degrees. Well, what was our angle when we started? 
39. So we'd expect that because we used 8.8. .8. Now if we had done a little more, you know, decimals here and maybe a few more decimals here or, or here, uh, we would have probably ended up with something even closer, maybe even 38.99. If we don't round at all, we're going to get exactly 39 because the sine of 39 is 0.6293. We used 0.6286 just because of the way we rounded it. Okay, so that's how that works. Now suppose you don't have one of these at home. Obviously at school you can use this and uh, you know no big deal when it, you know when it counts. Uh, but let's say you're home and you're doing it. Well, go into Google. Oops. Into Google. And you can just literally type in calculator. Okay, and it brings up the cal oh, let me move that over there. You see that all right? Make that a little bigger. Okay, now here's an interesting thing. You can actually, well, first of all, we're in radians. So you're going to want to make sure that's in degrees. Okay, just slide that thing over. And if we want inverse sign, you can actually see there's a button here that says INV. That's for inverse. Okay, so inverse sign. You can even see it change. You see that? See how it changed from sign? See, it says sign, and when I click on the button, it changes to sign negative one. So inverse sign, and, and what's funny about the Google is when you push it, it doesn't show sine negative one it shows something called arc sine okay arc sine is a is another way of saying inverse sine the the reason they do this and when you get to like algebra 2 and trig and all that stuff you tend to write it this way because um when you write the negative one it almost looks like a power but in this context it's not being a power it's just inverse so arc sine is another way of saying inverse it could be arc cosine arc tangent in fact if i clear that out if I were to do the same thing for inverse cosine, you'll see it'll say arc cosine. Okay? So don't let that trick you. It's the same thing. Inverse sine of point, uh, what was it? Point 0.6286286. And I did change to degrees. Equals 38.95 degrees. So you can do it. You can find it. If you really want to do the work and you, you know, and you want to get your answers and you want to see how you're doing, you will find a way to find the inverse um, on the computer. Maybe even your phones can do it. Um, my phone actually can't. So I'd have to get another, I mean, I could get another app, I'm sure, but my basic calculator does not actually do inverse. So you'll have to find it if you don't have a regular, you know, obviously not a lot of people have these kind. Oops. Not a lot of people have these kind, but even if you have just a scientific one, it should be able to do um, the inverses. Okay? And that's the basics. So uh, let me know if you have any questions on that. Hopefully that helps. And uh, just, I guess, one last little thing. I, I think on some of the questions it says specifically solve the right triangle. That just means find everything. It could be angles, it could be sides, like it could just say find this too, right? To find this one, you could have used, you know, um, well, once you found the angle, or actually you could just use Pythagorean theorem. If I'm giving you these two, just use Pythagorean theorem, that's fine. Uh, if you get this angle here, well, then maybe you want to use cosine. I don't know. What, whatever you want to do to get every single piece, you'll have to get both. Okay? All right. I'll leave it there. Uh, again, if you have any questions, let me know, and I will talk to you guys later. See ya.